Jane Wood Worley Peak, 1945. One year, when the when the we went to war, his four-year course was shortened to three years, so he graduated one year early, which was fine from my point of view. Married a year than, earlier than we would have otherwise, and he um, <clears throat> he was sent to New York. At that time, most of uh, many of his classmates who were had the same assignment as he had, were on cutters that were going across, uh, convoy duty across the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean and back. And we thought that's what Paul would be doing too, so there was the hope that we would get together every two or three weeks. That was very nice. So he reported into the New York, discovered he was being sent to the Mediterranean. <laughs> he was sent down to Norfolk to go over to the Mediterranean on a a uh, small ship that the, co that the military had taken over. And um, so we had a cheerful goodbye and he went down there. And the next day he called me, he said, come on down, I don't know when I'll be going, it may be a while. My father worked in New York City, as I said, I called him and I said, Paul has asked me to go down to Norfolk, shall I go? He said, no. He, said, he had a war to win, he was doing his best, he worked for the rubber company, he was working so hard <coughs> had to travel all over the country and he was so tired of young brides taking up spaces on, on, um, on the trains that he needed. And I went anyway. <laughs> Sat up all night, got down there the next day. He met me at the train, took me to the hotel. There was only one hotel in uh, Charleston, South Carolina it was. <clears throat> only one, one hotel in Charleston then. He got me settled there and then he had to go back to the base, go to his ship. His ship had come back from the Mediterranean and was in the shipyard to be updated for duty in the Pacific. The war in Japan was still going on. So um, he did that and everybody had leave. They hadn't had leave in years, but they all got uh, some leave at that, that point. And while he was on leave, the war ended. The Japanese surrendered and that was the end of that. Then the, the, these Coast Guard cutters, they had to decide what they were going to do with them. Um, duty, duty had changed so much during the war. The ship was in the shipyard and the ship stayed there the better part of a year while they decided what would be the duty of these Coast Guard cutters. Finally, it was decided the ship would be sent to Boston. It was on ocean station duty. And so I went back and lived with my family, but he would be in port for three or four weeks at a time, and then out on sea duty again. And when he was in port, I would go up to Boston and stay with him. The rest of the time I stayed with my, my parents in New Haven. And he was out at sea a great deal. He had a lot of sea duty. Well, it was pretty grim, because we didn't know what the future was going to hold, but we survived it. Well, are we going to get any meat tomorrow? Will, will our, what we call them, our little things that we had to buy food and meat with, well, we don't have any this week. We're not going to have any meat for Sunday. That everything was going to the to the military, to the armed forces. If we civilians starved, that was tough. Well, you had you were permitted uh, so many units. I can't remember what it was called. You could spend those the way you wanted, or what you could find in the grocery store, in in the meat market. Um, if they didn't have it, then of course you didn't matter how many ration points you had, you couldn't couldn't buy them if they didn't have it. Um, you hoped that you could get a fairly reasonable reasonable diet in the long run. We didn't starve. And we knew that everything, so many things that we didn't have were being sent to the service people. And they needed them a lot more than we did. And ships were being sunk. Ships uh, off the East Coast were sunk every day and all those people dying. It's horrible.